Okay, there's a few fears we might be going through something akin to another Lehman Brothers right now. Um, like literally, as we speak, the last day or two, they've been going like hell. Trying to uh, keep their asses afloat. What's happened is there's been, usually when the Fed creates more money, it comes out of, you know, more bonds or a loan or something like that that's created. They have drawn down $20 billion out of their own capital fund in a matter of just a couple of days like that, um, which is highly strange to have moved that much money almost as one transaction or something like that or a couple of transactions in the space of a few days. This sort of coincides with a great heap of gold being taken out of the COMEX and all of a sudden this is going on. There's a belief that something big is happening because of these big shifts of gold and there's $20 billion just sort of go and click off the capital fund sheet. When you see the graphs, it, they're just going along and then there's just a straight line straight down, uh, which means there's something big going on. Of course, you haven't heard about it on the media because what they're doing right now is trying to do whatever the fuck they can to save whatever the hell is screwed up. Only when they fix it will you hear about it. Only the day after or a few days later when they reckon they've got it all sticky taped together again, are you going to hear about it? The same happened with Bear Stearns and all that. Um, you know, I believe um, long-term capital management, same thing. Everybody shuts up about it. They have all these secret meetings that sometimes go through most of the night um, and try and patch everything up, and then you only hear about it after the fact. They reckon, though, something is going on right now. And uh, it's just, these charts are just looking a bit strange to just have straight ups or straight downs. Um, yeah. So don't be surprised if you hear before too long that something was going on around about this time. But anyway, there's something else that's come out about Bitcoin and the European Union, and we'll go on to that. Politicians are calling for more control over the circulation of virtual currencies. The Commission wants them to be covered by the Anti-Money Laundering Directive, a decision which will put an end to the anonymity of clients. Eunan O'Neill asked Jeffrey Albert Tucker from the Foundation for Economic Education if it's a viable plan. There have been many studies on this on the subject about the use of, of Bitcoin for nefarious purposes, and it turns out that this is wildly overblown, that the only currency, the currency is... Well, well, I remember the people who love Bitcoin so much saying that uh, Germany, the German government, is recognizing Bitcoin. My answer to that was, so they can friggin' tax you on it. They're only going to recognize it for the purposes of taxation. Uh, yeah. Now they're trying to uh, crack down on it, want to de-anonymize Bitcoin and, um, you know, basically uh, know everything that's going on in the Bitcoin world. For the anti-money laundering directive and the, uh, you know, anti-terrorist, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, I am most likely pretty right that like all these blasted war on terror, you know, things that involve following banking transactions. At the end of the day, they're all for the purpose of the tax office of that country, whether it's the IRS, the ATO, or whatever the hell the German one is. And, uh, you know, have we got to work out how sort of, you know, how, how some bin Laden or this one or that one is, is you know, funding terrorism. Yeah, okay. You've got to work out how you're going to follow the money trail of a couple of guys who, in 2001, bought a few plane tickets 
and a couple of fucking dollar store box cutters like that and took over a plane. I mean, it took over a number of planes, but at the end of the day, these guys didn't need big finances to pull off terrorism anyway. As we saw with the Bali bombings, where about 80 Australians died, including a guy who was an engineer that was mates with the guys I'd done my spray painting apprenticeship with. He was one of the ones that died in the bombing. Um, yeah, and what did they have? Some shitbox little minivan packed full of fucking explosives worth a few hundred dollars, you know, and blew the shit out of a nightclub, and I mean blew the fucking shit out of it. Um, this is the thing. They always come out with this, it's for terrorist reasons, it's for anti-money laundering reasons, and as this guy goes on to say, who they're talking to, the biggest one used in any terrorist stuff and any money laundering stuff is always the US dollar anyway. But trust me, I know why they look into all this crap, and it's never for terrorism purposes, it's for the taxation purposes. And now Bitcoin's on the line. Anyway, quite frankly, I have never had much trust in Bitcoin um, because, uh, <laughs> you know, let's face it, what has it got backing it? You know, oh, it's a unique code. Yes, okay. It is a unique mathematical equation that, you know, has only certain numbers that can fit it and certain strings that can fit it, which are fewer and fewer. But uh, that's great. You found some glorious, you know, mathematical um, anomaly. What's its real value? At the end of the day, if you're up shit creek in a barbed wire canoe, do you think people really want to hand around a few blips and blops that a bunch of bloggers and computer geeks are talked into being worth something? Or do you think that I'd rather have a few buckets full of them things there? Because at least they can eat those. And as the old saying goes, as the Indians said, you can't eat money. Well, you can't eat Bitcoin either. I mean, money, you might actually have a chance because the US dollar has been made out of uh, cotton for years. So if you can manage to eat a few bed sheets, we well, can eat a US dollar. You can't eat a Bitcoin at all at all. So anyway, I think uh, when push comes to shove and, and money and value of things shakes and all mathematical anomalies and shitstorms and formulas and contracts and theories that can't really hold up, fall down, what's really going to matter is having um, food and stuff like that. And yeah, I've got into silver because I believe that's one of the ones that's also going to be worth something. And, you know, once again, that's got industrial uses um, and whatnot. But like preppers have told me for years, food's the best thing. And that's probably uh, a lot of the reason why I'm so obsessive with getting the productivity of this place to produce a decent amount of food.